let's talk about chapter 3 wound healing and tissue repair uh, first we have to know what are the factors which influence the healing of the wound uh, the factors are uh, as we see site of the wound uh, the area where there is high vascularity the wound is faster like in the face in less vascular area it will slowly and structure involved if it is deeper wound then it will slowly mechanism of wound like is it incised wound clean wound then it is fast and the f dirty wounds a worst wounds is slowly and then this is the contaminations like foreign bodies and bacteria leads to slower healing and there are other system factors like malnutrition diseases like diabetes immunosuppressions steroid therapy these are to uh, slow down the rate of wound healing now the normal wound healing takes place in three steps first is the inflammatory phase second is the remodeling phase and third is the second is the proliferative phase and third is the remodeling phase the inflammatory phase begins immediately and lasts for two to three days proliferative phase lasts from three days to three weeks and the proliferative phase last um, after that the remodeling phase last for three weeks to around two to three years so in the first phase there is bleeding followed by vasoconstriction thrombus formation and then the platelet arrives and the platelet releases factors such as platelet derived growth factor and then transforming growth factor beta and platelet factor 4 these helps to attack the other cells like neutrophils and macrophages these uh, secret various amines like histamine, serotonin, and prostaglandin. This leads to the inflammation. And the initial framework for support is provided by the fibrin, which is produced from fibrinogen. And on top of that, the proliferation occurs, which mainly through occurs to the fibroblast, which secretes the collagen and ground substance. And this requires vitamin C. The immature collagen is type 3 collagen. And this is followed by remodeling phase which in which the type 3 collagen is converted into type 1 collagen which is the definitive type which is in the ratio type 1 to type 3 in the ratio 4 is to 1 and this maturation leads to increased tensile strength so the maximal strength is obtained at around 12 weeks and 80 percent of the normal strength is acquired so in specific tissues also the healing occurs in the same way like in bone it occurs to the formation of callus in nerve distal there is valerian degeneration and proximal the traumatic generation up to the level of node of Ranbir and then through the various uh, neurotropic hormones neurotropins uh, the nerve regrows and in tendon there is two types of provision for uh, the nutrition of the tendon there is intrinsic neurogen to the vincular blood flow and synovial diffusion and extrinsic to the formation of fibrous adhesion between tendon and the sheath but if there is too much adhesion then it may lead to contracture so that must be avoided now we can classify the wound healing into three types primary healing means there is no gap between the two structures it is a clean wound so there is less inflammation and normal healing with minimal scar second in intention means the wound is left open so the it heals by granulation tissue formation and then contracture of the wound and then epithelialization leading to increased inflammation and proliferation and poor scar formation tertiary infection means we cannot close the wound primarily because of some infection or such so we leave it open for some time and then after the conditions are favorable we close it down that is also a direct primary intention now we can also see the wound as tidy and untidy wounds and the managing acute wound is through the ATLS principle so that we do not miss any important injury and first damage control is done before the definitive surgery in this what we need to know is uh, what is the difference between flap and graft flap means one having blood supply and graft means it does not have its own blood supply so graft requires the site to have adequate nutrition specific wounds bite is quite dangerous because the human mouth contains variety of pathogenic flora so treatment prophylaxis and prophylaxis against this bacteria is essential now for managing acute wound it is important first we have to clean the wound explore it know up to where the wound is and then debride all the contents of the wound we must repair the structures replace the lost tissues and adequate skin cover is essential uh, in this important is compartment syndrome if there is compartment syndrome means there will be pain 
pallor, paresthesia, pain and passive stretching, paralysis. So, for this fasciotomy is essential. If compartment pressure is greater than 30 millimeter or curry, if the symptoms as I said are present. So, um, other important fact is uh, ulcers. Ulcer is most common in the legs. Uh, the definition of ulcer is a breach in the continuity of the epithelium. So, uh, for chronic ulcer, we have to always rule out uh, squamous cell carcinoma, which is known as marzoline ulcer. The cause of like ulcer may be like venous, venous hypertension, varicose vein, arterial ulcer due to a system may be atherosclerosis or local arterial obstruction, or it might be due to carcinoma, it might be due to uh, uh, trauma, it might be due to chronic infection, or due to some autoimmune disease. In pressure ulcer, we must know that these are ulcer or tissue necrosis due to prolonged pressure, mostly occurs in bedridden patient. For that, we must know the site where it mostly occurs. In the leg, it occurs in the sacrum, ischial tuberosity, greater trochanter, heel, and then in the occiput and malleolus, mainly lateral. Now, staging is at first, there will be only erythema, which is not blanchable without the breach in ep the epidermis. In second stage, there is breach up to epidermis or dermis and not reaches to the subcutaneous tissue. In third, there is full thickness skin locks extending up to the subcutaneous tissue, but it does not reach the fascia. In fourth, it reaches the fascia means it involves bone, muscles, tendons, knobs, etc. So, why does pressure also occur is because external pressure greater than 30 millimeter or is the capillary flow is disrupted. So, without blood supply, it goes cell death. For this, the main treatment is prevention through uh, use of pneumatic beds, movement every two hours when a bed ridden patient in a wheelchair bound patient, the asking the patient to lift them from the bed for at least 10 seconds every 10 minutes. And the next is vacuum assisted closure, which is also known as negative pressure wound closure. It means constant pressure is applied so that there is less tissue edema, increased blood flow and proper granulation tissue is formed. Next is we have to know is necrotizing soft tissue infection or necrotizing fasciitis caused by gram positive bacteria as well as negative. Gram positive includes Staph aureus and Staph pi strep pyogenes. Gram negative includes Escherichia coli, Pseudomonas, Clostridium, Bacteroids and then beta amyloidic streptococcus. So, mostly occurs in immunodeficient individuals. Two main types are clostridial which causes gas gangrene and non-clostridial which causes streptococcal gangrene and necrotizing fasciitis. The symptoms are important. So, if there is unusual pain more than expected, edema beyond the area of erythema, crepitus, skin blistering, fever, grey discharge and pink orange skin stain staining, focal skin gangrene and in late there will be shock coagulopathy and multi organ failure. So, important point is unusual pain and then is crepitus and then is edema extending above the sign of the erythema. Next in wound healing we have to know about the scars. Scars is the mature phase of wound healing. It is of three types atrophic, hypertrophic and keloid. Atrophic scar means it is pale flat and stressed in appearance which mainly operates on the back and area of tension. So, it is quite thin, so easily disrupted. Hypertrophic scar means the scar is in excess amount, but it is does not cross the original incision or the wound. A keloid means it is excessive scar which extends beyond the boundary. It is mostly a genetic area and is present mostly in the area in, in the chest triangular point between shoulder tip and jiffy sternum. For treatment, the thing is, if we exercise it, it might recur, so we might have to use pressure bandages, we might have to use silicone gel, we may have to use intralesional steroid, we might use excision and steroid, we can use uh, excision and then radiotherapy, and we can also use vitamin E, palm oil, etc. So, for avoiding the scar, we must produce appropriate uh, incision in the according to the Langer's line, so there is area of less tension. And if we do not, if the scar causes the, crosses the uh, joints, then it might cause contractures. So, for that, we might have to use various techniques like Z-plasty. And for scars too, to get into the uh, 
proper repair of the scars we might have to use different techniques like WNG plus T this is an example of that thank you